And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Israelites, let's get right into it. In chapter 19, we talk about fasting. You learn that your fast is the sacrifice you give to the Most High as an offering in spiritual warfare. You also learn that fasting strengthen and nourish your spirit. Fasting is feeding your spirit the food it needs to stand against the principalities and dark powers of this world, as well as the spiritual wickedness in high places and the unclean spirits sent to establish evil covenants in the realm of the spirit. Israelites, a weak spirit cannot stand against the Satans and unclean spirits, your adversaries. This is why it's important to make fasting a tradition that you participate in often. Don't wait until your spirit becomes malnourished to fast. By then it will be too late. The unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity will establish all sorts of covenants while your spirit is malnourished. A lot of Israelites wait until their life is falling apart and they're back against the wall to fast and pray. Praying should be a part of your daily routine. You should fast often. Don't wait until the Satans put a stronghold on your life to nourish your spirit. Israelites, don't wait until you're under attack to fast. The scripture said to pray all kinds of prayers. The scriptures also said some devils will only flee from you through prayer and fasting. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. As you heard in the scriptures, the word of the Most High instructs us to pray always. You communicate with the Most High through prayer. If you want your voice heard, you have to pray. Israelites, listen to the scriptures and pray all kinds of prayers always. Even if you believe what you're praying for is insignificant, pray anyway. The Most High want you to come to him for everything. The scripture says some devil only flee through prayer and fasting. Israelites, little devils that often appear to you in the spirit realm tiny, those devils will flee from you through repenting and praying. Little devils that have not matured in your life, you can pray away. When it comes to principalities, principalities are high level demons. When it comes to spiritual wickedness in high places, fasting is required. In the word of the Messiah, certain kind of devil only come out through prayer and fasting. I have seen a comment that said praying is enough and that fasting was just a bonus. Israelites, don't allow yourself to be deceived by the workers of iniquity that pose to be Israelites in the comment section trying to distract you, as well as religious Israelites that are bound spiritually. The God of this world has blind their eyes so that they cannot see in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israelites, listen to the word of the Most High and understand that some devils only flee through prayer and fasting. Don't let the sons and daughters of Belial mislead you. Israelites, it's important for you to know the importance of fasting as well as the consequences to a terrible fast. All of us go to great length to give the people we care about a good gift. Some people spend a lot of money to find the perfect gift to give their loved ones. Some people spend months or even years planning to find the perfect gift. When the pagan season of the most wonderful time of the year comes, a lot of people establish all sorts of covenants with the spirit of poverty to buy gifts for their friends and family. A lot of you go to great length to find the perfect gift. When it comes to fasting, you should have the same mindset. 
you should aim to offer the most high a superior sacrifice. A lot of people believe abstaining from food is all they have to do. Fasting is sacred. A good fast will attract the most high to you. Fasting is offering the most high, the creator, an offering. If you truly fear and love the most high like you say you do, you will go to great length to conduct a fast that he will accept. Israelites, you can't offer the most high earthly material gifts. There is no value in earthly material junk. Just as the most high said, you cannot please him in the flesh. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Earthly material wealth only pleases the flesh. The Most High is spirit. He has no use for your earthly possessions. Offering the Most High your material possession for an offering is not acceptable. Earthly material gifts made with man's hands will pollute the altar of the Most High. You can't give to the Most High anything that he has created. Fasting is the only offering you can give to the Most High that shows your love and fear of him. Afflicting your flesh during a fast is like presenting to the Most High a sacrifice without blemish. Just as our ancestors did in the past when they found the perfect lamb without blemish to offer the Most High for a sacrifice. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Israelites, the Most High want you to view fasting in high regards. You don't want the holy angel Michael, your intercessor, and the prince over our people, as well as the other angels that present your prayers and offering to the Most High to bring to the Father an offering that is unacceptable. You're putting the angels that present your sacrifice to the Father in a difficult position. Many of you claim to love the Messiah for all that he has done for you. Don't give the Messiah a lame sacrifice to present to the Father on your behalf. Israelites, the time has come for you to know what is happening behind the scenes. Religion did not teach you this. All of this is new to some of you. If you're going to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, make sure you're serving him according to his statutes, commandments, and laws. Israelites, don't serve the Father your way. You must humble yourself and follow and serve the Most High the way he commands for his people to serve him. But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the Father seeketh such to worship him. When you present to the Most High a bad sacrifice, that is how many of your prayers go unanswered. The angels that present your prayers and offerings to the Father is not going to bring sin in the presence of the Most High. This so-called awakening is separating the tares in the Israelite community from the wheat. Some of you are probably wondering, what is a bad sacrifice? When you fast, you should be in the word and praying throughout the duration of your fast. During a fast, you shouldn't be working, watching TV, or engaging in any form of entertainment. Your hobbies that you enjoy should cease. A lot of you plan vacations that pleases your flesh months in advance. You should plan and prepare for a fast as well. The same way you plan a vacation to please your flesh, you can use your vacation time to conduct a fast. Take the time to plan and prepare for your fast the same way you plan for a vacation. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Israelites, there are times when you have to fast ASAP and you won't have the time to prepare. When the workers of iniquity send an arrow of untimely death against you, the Most High allow you to see it in the spirit realm. As soon as you wake up, you must fast. A symbol that reveal your adversary sent the spirit of death in the form of infirmity when you eat in the dream, when someone is feeding you or gave you food to eat. The food symbolized the poison or the curse that will inflict your body with an infirmity to kill you. If the Most High did not make you vomit the food in the spirit realm, you must fast immediately. Remember, earthly food does nothing for your spirit. You shouldn't be eating earthly food in the spirit realm. The workers of iniquity love to use food to come against you. What did the other species of mankind bring to the indigenous black people as a sign of peace when they came to scout their land to steal it? Food. Israelites, be careful with the food you consume. 
And afterwards, she sent me food mingled with enchantments. And when the eunuch who brought it came, I looked up and beheld a terrible man giving me with the dish a sword. And I perceived that her scheme was to beguile me. And when he had gone out, I wept, nor did I taste that or any other of her food. So then after one day she came to me and observed the food and said unto me, Why is it that thou hast not eaten of the food? And I said unto her, It is because thou hast filled it with deadly enchantments, and hast said it thou, I come not near to idols, but to the Lord alone. Being fed in the dream or someone giving you food to eat, as well as being injected by a needle, is a witchcraft hit of the spirit of infirmity that would lead to untimely death. If you didn't vomit the food in the spirit realm, try to vomit when you wake up and fast to reverse the sorcery done against you. Covenants established in the spirit realm with severe repercussions should be taken seriously. That is when a fast should be done immediately after the Most High show you in the spirit realm. The same rules apply when an immediate fast is done. Spend time in the presence of the Father, pray and get into the word. Fasting is not only a sacrifice, fasting have other benefits as well. Fasting will help with your overall health by cleansing your body from the genetically modified food you have consumed. Lastly, fasting nourishes your spirit. It builds up your spirit to fight back in the realm of the spirit. To those of you that wonder how to control your spirit in the spirit realm, when you nourish your spirit with the word of the most high and praying, it strengthens your spirit. Just like how earthly food give your body energy and the fuel it needs to operate, when you nourish your spirit daily with the word of the Most High and praying will give your spirit the fuel it needs. You will begin to fight back in the spirit realm. Israelites, when you fast, make sure your fast is done privately. Do not announce to the world that you're on a fast. That thou appear not unto men to fast but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. When our ancestors proclaim a fast for all Israelites to participate in, our ancestors sent the message throughout the tribes within our nation. Fasting for deliverance or to get an answer from the Most High was done among the Israelites. Our ancestors did not involve other nations in their fast or their plans. Today, I see Israelites announcing to the whole world that they are on a fast. Even the Israelite community on social media from various groups are letting their enemies know that they will be fasting. In addition, they're asking others to join them. The workers of iniquity love when you overshare. Social media is a place where everyone believes it's a safe place to overshare. This is why the workers of iniquity love social media. When it comes to spirituality, don't announce to the world that you're on a fast. Israelites, it's important to keep the door to your mouth closed. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Israelites, I can't emphasize on the importance of keeping your mouth shut. Posting on social media that you're fasting or will be fasting is sharing with the world. Israelites, you have to find a way to become discreet with the moves you make. This is why I mentioned in a previous message that I speak to you in coded words. Only the remnant will get it. All the remnant it was given to know the mysteries will understand. The Messiah didn't announce to the world his next move. Even when he was among the people and his disciples, the disciples asked the Messiah, why do you speak in parables? The Messiah responded with, it wasn't given for some to know the mysteries. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. When you fast, you're about to attack your enemy. You don't want to announce to the world that you're about to attack your enemies. Do it in secret. What army announced to their enemy that they're on their way to invade their country? A lot of Israelites do not have the proper outlook on life. A lot of Israelites are still religious. Some Israelites need to fast to be delivered from the religious spirit. When you fast in spiritual warfare, you're attacking your enemies. Fasting and praying is the battle. During spiritual warfare, you're praying warfare prayers. 
When you come into agreement with the word, you're asking the most high to enforce his words in spiritual warfare. The scripture said the word of the most high will not return to him void. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Spiritual warfare includes fasting and praying. When you announce to your enemies that stock your channels in your life that you're fasting, you're alerting them on your next move. Your adversaries who invade your privacy through the apps you give permission to record your conversations and access to all of your personal information, your enemies are watching you. Regardless if you feel as if you're not significant enough to be watched, your enemies live in fear. They observe all of you and keep up with what you're doing. They do this so that you will never rise as a people, as well as to know how to attack you in the spirit realm. Israelites, in spiritual warfare, you're fighting for deliverance. When you say you're fasting to your enemies, you're declaring war. During spiritual warfare, you pray warfare prayers. Warfare prayers are prayers that use the word of the Most High that unleash the judgment of the Most High. You want the Most High's words to do exactly what it says it will do against the wicked in the kingdom of darkness. The words you're speaking in warfare prayers are meant to cut your enemies in pieces. The word of the Most High will do exactly that. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Warfare prayers is not the same with your day-to-day -day prayers asking for wisdom and understanding, or prayers that you pray to find your life purpose. Warfare prayers are prayers that are meant to destroy your enemies. Warfare prayers is when you're asking the Most High to fight on your behalf against an enemy that has a stronghold over your life. The scriptures give us a very good example of a warfare prayer done by King David in the book of Psalms. When the enemies of King David surround him to fight against him, King David humbled himself before the Most High. We all know that King David is a strong warrior king. In order for him to remain strong, he needs the power of the Most High on his side. He humbled himself and asked the Most High to destroy his enemies through warfare prayers in the book of Psalms, chapter 109. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. But the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love they are my adversaries. But I give myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good, and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds, and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. As you heard, Israelites, King David did not ask the Most High to have mercy on his enemies. Religion taught you to love and pray for your enemies. Once again, religious doctrines don't align with the word of the Most High. Israelites, you must understand that your enemies have zero sympathy and compassion towards you. Unclean spirits are there to steal, kill, and destroy. Yet you were taught to love your enemies. When the workers of iniquity send the spirit of death against you, did they pray and ask the Most High to have mercy on you? When the workers of iniquity that conspire against you day and night sent the spirit of poverty against the indigenous black people, did they consider you and your children? Absolutely not. Instead of praying, they conduct a demonic ritual and offer a sacrifice to their idol gods to give them the desires of their heart. Because they have a perpetual hatred against you, their heart desires to rule over you and keep you down as a people. Therefore, when they give their idols a sacrifice, they are asking their idols to destroy you as a people. Why would you turn around and ask the Most High to have mercy on your enemies? When you engage in spiritual warfare, you need to have the same energy and send the God of our fathers, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob after your enemies. When the Most High is pleased with you, he will send your prince, the holy angel Michael, to deliver you. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Your prince, the holy angel Michael, act on the command of the Most High. If you're worshipping the creature instead of the Creator, are you sure you have the Most High on your side? The Most High will not share his glory with another. If your prince only act on the command of the Most High and you don't worship nor serve the Most High, how will your prince help you if he is not commanded to do so? Wake up, Israelites. The battle begin when the Satans, the workers of iniquity, and the unclean spirits come against you. Fighting back starts when you fast and pray warfare prayers. Your prayer is your altar. When you're seeking deliverance from an unclean spirit, you start to speak the word of the Most High back to him to remind him of his words, since his words will not return to him void. Israelites, yes, you have to remind the Most High of his words to establish the covenant. I saw a comment of someone saying, you don't have to remind the Most High of his words. Let me remind you to be careful of self-righteous Israelites who have been brainwashed by religion as well as the workers of iniquity sent to cause division in the comment section. The Most High said in his words, put me in remembrance of my word and let us plead together. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Israelites, you need to remind the Most High of his words to establish the covenant. When you speak the word of the Most High, he will do exactly what his word said it will do. If you need him to protect you from a devil or someone that is slandering your name and attacking you with false accusations, get into the word. Stand in the presence of the Most High during your fast and say to the Father, You said, No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. You also said, Every tongue that rise against me in judgment you shall condemn. For that is my heritage as a servant of yours, and my righteousness is in you. Therefore, do as your words say, because your words will not return to you void. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Israelites, in the example of warfare prayer you just heard, every word spoken came from the word of the Most High. None of it was my words. All I did was remind the Most High of what he said he would do for me. Israelites, there are countless scriptures you can use to remind the Most High of his words to fight against your enemies in spiritual warfare. You can even use King David's prayer in Psalm 109. The reason it's important for you to use the word of the Most High, the word of the Most High is alive. The word of the Most High will cut your enemies into pieces. The word of the Most High can transform a person or a situation. Your words can. The Most High will only do what his words say. That is why it's important for you to know the promises the Most High made to his people. Also, you should know the judgment the Most High is reserving for the wicked. During spiritual warfare, you can remind the Most High of his judgment against the wicked. Remember when the man in the tomb with legions of devils came to the Messiah for deliverance? The devils occupying him were afraid and said to the Messiah, Have you come to torment us before our time? For behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Even the devils oppressing the man in the tomb knew what the word of the Most High said concerning them. The unclean spirits in the man are aware of their end. They knew a day is coming for them to be tormented. Israelites, this is why it's important for you to know the word. When you know the word, you can use the word to overcome every spiritual wickedness in high places. You can ask the Most High to torment these devils before their time. To learn more about warfare prayers, check out the praying playlist on this channel, as well as the spirit round playlist to find examples of warfare prayers. When you pray warfare prayers, your mission is to destroy. That is why it's not good to announce to the world that you're on a fast. 
the workers of iniquity know that if you're fasting, it's either you want to accomplish a personal mission or you're looking to be delivered. When you tell your enemies you're on a fast, you're alerting your enemies to prepare for war. Don't give them that advantage. You want to send the Most High and his army after your enemies when they least expect it. When King Jehoshaphat humbled himself and made Judah as well as other Israelites participate in a fast for deliverance, they didn't alert the nations around them of the fast. When the nations gathered together to come against Judah, King Jehoshaphat didn't know until a servant told him that his enemies surrounded him. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. When the Most High gave King Jehoshaphat a response after praying and fasting, he didn't share it with the world. Likewise, Israelites, follow how King Jehoshaphat handled the situation when his enemy descended upon him. King Jehoshaphat knew exactly what he needed to do to get help from the Most High. He fasted and prayed and also commanded his people to fast and pray. If you want to participate in a fast among the communities you fellowship in, Find a way to do it in secret. When the workers of iniquity know that you're on a fast, they will increase the attacks against you. During a fast, you can either nourish your spirit or give the kingdom of darkness a huge opportunity to establish covenants. Have you noticed when you're fasting, the enemy comes to tempt you in every way possible. Sometimes they will try to discourage you. They will go as far as to get you to eat something so that you would fail. All of this is warfare against you when you make it known publicly that you're on a fast. The workers of iniquity will come to prey on you. Don't give your enemies an opportunity. Close the doors on these workers of iniquity. Don't be like the hypocrites. Fast in secret. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Israelites, spiritual warfare is the way we are supposed to approach every battle or situation that rise against us. Boycotting, physically fighting your enemies, cussing people out on social media and protesting is not how you fight back, especially if your enemies are attacking you in the spirit realm. Let me remind you that everything that you're enduring in the physical realm are the manifestation of what took place in the spirit realm. There are some Israelites that can't comprehend that fighting in the flesh is fruitless. There are some Israelites that hold the stance of needing to fight in the flesh. Nothing good comes from operating in the flesh. Anything you do in the flesh is the will of the Satans. The Satans operate in the flesh. Israelites, nothing that you do in the flesh will please the Most High. The scripture said you can't please the Most High in the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are at odds with each other. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Israelites, whatever pleases the flesh will not please the spirit. Our goal is to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth, as well as to follow his statutes, commandments, and laws. If you love the Most High like you say you do, you would honor the Most High when he said nothing that you do in the flesh will please him. When you fight in the flesh, it becomes difficult to identify your enemies. That is why the indigenous black people focus on the other species of mankind and not the dark powers behind them. When you fight in the flesh, you won't know what spirit is oppressing you until the covenant starts to manifest in the physical realm. If a worker of iniquity sent the spirit of poverty against you, you won't know until the curses on your finances start to manifest in the physical realm. 
By the time the curses of the evil covenant begin to pour out on your life, the covenant have been established and the spirit of poverty have control over your finances. The only way to take control over your finances after the curse started to manifest in the physical realm is to engage in spiritual warfare. Protesting will not cause the devil to flee. Boycotting is a temporary solution that will not attack the root. The spirit of poverty will find another avenue to oppress your finances. Protesting is not going to cause the spirit of poverty to flee. I hope you can see that you're going in circles when you allow the evil covenant to manifest in the physical realm. The Most High said, in order for a devil to flee, you must submit to the Most High, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How are you resisting the devil if you don't know the devil is oppressing you? The scripture says, submit to the Most High. Submitting to the Most High goes back to serving the Father in the spirit and in truth. In addition, honoring his statutes, commandments, and laws. If you fight in the spirit where your enemies are attacking you, the battlefield is leveled. You can avoid your finances being oppressed by the spirit of poverty because the spirit of poverty won't get the chance to oppress your finances when you destroy the spirit of poverty in the spirit realm. No covenant was established to give the spirit of poverty access to your finances. I hope you're starting to understand. Collectively as a people, the indigenous black people have several unclean spirits sent against them to oppress them as a whole. For multiple generations, the indigenous black people have been fighting their enemies by mainly protesting. What have protesting done for our people? Every generation experienced the same trauma. It's safe to say fighting in the flesh has done nothing for us as a people. But if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. This generation is good at getting the other species of mankind to apologize on social media. Israelites, will their apologies cause a devil to flee? No. Matter of fact, their apologies is for social media only. It does nothing for the indigenous black people outside of social media. The indigenous black people remain oppressed despite protesting and boycotting for multiple generations. The time has come for you to attack the root. The root cause is spiritual and the spirit realm will reveal everything to you. The main reason so many Israelites and indigenous black people struggle to fight back, they don't see their circumstances as warfare. If they knew that everything is a spirit, then they would follow the most high's instructions on how to cause a devil to flee. You can't escape spiritual warfare. If you're seeking deliverance, you are fighting against principalities and powers. The scriptures clearly state that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Israelites, you can't fight the principalities, the dark powers of this world, and the spiritual wickedness in high places in the flesh. That is giving the Satan's home field advantage. Fighting in the flesh is Satan fighting against Satan. The scripture said, if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. The kingdom of darkness is not divided. The Satan's kingdom is united. That is how they are able to rule over you from the beginning. And if Satan cast out Satan... He is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? The workers of iniquity that serve the Satans, they carry out the will of the Satans to keep the beast system operating. When they fight against you, they are fighting by witchcraft and sorcery. Spiritual warfare counter witchcraft and sorcery, not protesting and boycotting. This is why you're wasting your time fighting in the flesh. A witch or a warlock powers are ineffective against an Israelite that served the Most High. When you see your spirit fighting back against an unclean spirit in the spirit realm after engaging in a successful spiritual warfare battle, whatever evil they sent your way was returned back upon their own head. If it was the spirit of infirmity, you will see yourself vomiting whatever food you eat in the spirit realm. Vomiting the food symbolizes victory. 
You don't have to worry about the spirit of infirmity attaching itself to you because you defeated the devil in the spirit realm. His mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. Israelites, don't you want to see your spirit fighting back in the spirit realm versus having to engage in spiritual warfare and going through the agony of being oppressed to get the devil to flee? Flesh and blood are the seen things. Our focus should be on the unseen. The unseen is spirit. The seen things are temporary. Israelites, you have to allow the Most High to transform you by renewing your mind. None of the battles you face in life should be fought in the flesh. You have been fighting in the flesh for multiple generations and you remain in captivity. The battle is spiritual and the battle belongs to the Most High. If you want to communicate with the Father, you have to operate in the spirit and pray. Fasting will bring the presence of the Father to you and open up the ears of the Most High to hear your prayers. But the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Spiritual warfare is how we're supposed to fight back. Loving your enemies and praying for your enemies will delay the judgment of the Most High on the wicked. That is why religion encourages you to pray for your enemies. The Satans are the creators of religion. The time has come for you to fight back in the spirit. Shift your focus to the unseen. We have tried religion's way for multiple generations and it got us nowhere. Why not give the Most High a chance by following his instructions on how to serve him in the spirit and in the truth? The Most High, the Father, is our Savior, our leader, our government. Israelites, you don't want a leader in a government like the heathens. Don't trade the army of the Most High for an army of flesh. Our ancestors made that mistake and paid the price. Don't be like our ancestors that wanted a king like the heathens. Become set apart and accept the Most High plea to save you by returning to him. Israelites, the time has come for you to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell gat hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful.